For more on this, we are joined by Seth Denson, the co-founder and chief strategist at GDP Advisors. Seth, it's always great to see you. Uh, give us an idea of how significant the G20 summit was in terms of the rally that we're seeing right now. Is this a relief rally where investors are uh, relieved that we're not seeing increased tariffs on goods from China, or is this one of optimism about a trade deal with China moving forward? Because I think you've got a lot of things working right now. You've got a lot of positivity in the marketplace. You've got positive things happening in Asia overall, whether it be the trade deal, whether it be what's going on with North Korea. I think the markets are reacting to the possibility, at least in the short term, of some stability. Stability is what this market wants, and stability is what it received over the weekend, at least in the short term. And I think that's why we're seeing such a rally this morning. It's interesting, Seth, we see it across the board, right? The tech companies, the biggest tech companies, certainly gaining the most. It's a positive for the chip makers when you look at the reprieve that we've gotten with Huawei. And then also uh, an additional reprieve knowing that 300 billions of dollars worth of goods are not going to be taxed. Notably, the iPhone could have been impacted by that. But the small caps, in addition to the large caps, up. Why is this beneficiary for these small companies doing business largely here in the U.S.? Well, listen, all of these companies are, are attached. It's, it's a global economy these days. And so everything, we talk about the trickle market, the, everything trickles. And so when the, when the large caps do well and the large global economy is doing well, the small caps tend to do better as well. Anytime you've got this, this sense of stability in the marketplace from the standpoint of new tariffs not being levied, we even heard that the, you know, the Chinese government's going to allow for expansion of purchasing of agricultural goods. All of these things bring stability in the marketplace. And that's the key word of today, stability. I've said it three times. I'll probably say it again by the time we're done. Well, economic expansion is also a key word today because now officially as of, of July 2019, we are in the longest economic expansion since 1945 at 121 months. Uh, how long is it going to keep going, Seth? Well, listen, I think that if we study history, we recognize that there is an end to this. It's just a matter of when. And, you know, we've had the first, the best first half since 1997 in the marketplace. History tells us that means it'll slow to about a 3% growth uh, for, the, for the second half. And so I think that we are nearing the end. But what does that mean? Does that mean that we go into a massive recession like many are predicting for 2020? I don't know that that's the case. But I do think that we will start to see a, a slowdown in the amount of growth. You know what's interesting, Seth, is uh, markets in a super sweet spot today because additionally, traders still pricing in at least two rate cuts for 2019. Do you think that two rate cuts in 2019, given what we learned over the weekend, is justified? Well, not with today's news. Uh, I, I don't want to go so far as to say that we need an immediate rate cut. Uh, the market tends to be doing well. Again, I tend to come at this from a macro look of, of macroeconomics, of you use the rate cut when the economy starts to slow or take a downturn. Uh, and so while I think that that is a good leverage point for uh, Powell to have at his disposal, I don't think we're ready for that. And I'm hoping that the market will continue to stabilize itself and that we'll ha still have the option for a rate cut. I know that a lot of uh, analysts are saying maybe next month. I tend to think that that's not going to happen, that, but I do think that we will have a rate cut before the end of the year. Uh, Seth, I want to talk uh, chip stocks and, and tech companies, uh, specifically with regard to Huawei. Uh, Qualcomm stock up a whopping 4% right now, Intel up 2.4%. Other chip makers are up on the news that uh, they could be able to do business with Huawei very soon again. Um, I'm curious though, how that tone and, and, and Huawei being used as a bargaining chip in trade negotiations changes the idea around President Trump's uh, narrative about this being a national security issue, not necessarily being a trade issue. Well, listen, anytime you're talking about technology uh, and, and the overreaching aspects of technology, you do have to think about uh, national security especially when, when certain aspects of technology are produced and manufactured in foreign markets, whether that be China, whether that be Vietnam, whether it be anywhere. Uh, you've got to start thinking about what that has um, in store. And, and while I'm by no means a national security expert, I can understand why the administration is looking at it in a way of thinking through what the overall impact could be. Mm. All right, Seth Denson, we got to leave it there. Markets of 270 points on the Dow. Seth is a co-founder and chief strategist at GDP Advisors. Thank you.